Uh, what's happening inside that courtroom right now? Right now, Madeleine Westerhout, who is the executive assistant for Donald Trump's first two years in the White House, continues her testimony. She is facing cross-examination from Donald Trump's attorney, Susan Nicholas. Now, Westerhout was the individual who had the desk just outside of the Oval Office there, was able to have eye contact with Donald Trump at the Resolute desk. She testified here in the last 12 hours that she had set up meetings between Donald Trump and Michael Cohen in a separate meeting between Donald Trump and David Pecker in the White House in 2017, his first months in the White House. But Madeleine Westerhout, under cross-examination, is now facing questions about the extent of her understanding of his contacts and whether she knew that Donald Trump had reimbursed intentionally Michael Cohen for the checks made to Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. But you said it, of course, the marquee witness for the prosecution will be Michael Cohen. And with the expectation that he appears on Monday, he could be the culmination of the case that they lay out. Just a few days ago, they had suggested that they had about two weeks left of witnesses to bring forward. And the expectation is that Michael Cohen could be the last one. And he could round out potentially next week with the prosecution's witnesses. At that point in time, the defense would then be able to call their own witnesses to the stand. And of course, then we're looking at the end of this trial after several weeks here in which you've heard from the likes of Stormy Daniels to Hope Hicks and now soon to be Michael mm -hmm. Cohen. Mika. We have heard from so many uh, different witnesses. Vaughn, stand by. Ankush, in terms of your specialization in financial fraud, I'd like to ask you, um, we've seen a lot this week. We've heard a lot this week and a lot of it was very uh, salacious and specific. But in terms of what the former president is accused of, the counts against him, against him did the prosecution conduct itself in a manner that was effective and complete? Yeah, it's an excellent question. Uh, and I understand, you know, obviously the, the central component of the charges here concern the falsification of the records. Um, but I think that they did what they needed to do this week. And I know there's been a debate about whether they should have called Stormy Daniels and whether it went on too long. But here's, <laughs> here's the problem with the, the critics, candidly. Um, Donald Trump has denied this story for years, this, that, that they, right. he and Stormy Daniels had sex. That is the start of this whole story. Donald Trump's lawyer then repeated that denial in his opening statement. So if you're the prosecutors or if you're the jurors and you believe Stormy Daniels' account, prosecutors have just established that a central component of Donald Trump's defense is a lie and that Donald Trump's lead counsel passed along that lie in his opening statement. And the only thing that Stormy Daniels really mm -hmm. needed to put into evidence, and there's, there's all this like the cross-examination sort of nitpicking, the jurors only have to believe that she had sex with Donald Trump. That's it. They don't have to care whether she changed her story here and there over time, whether she wanted to make money or not. Um, and all the detail, you know, I, I, the judge seems to have gotten a little Proves frustrated it. at times. Excuse me? It pr the detail helps provide that proof, doesn't it? That, yes, that is exactly what I was going to say. When you're talking about a story where only two people are in the room and one of the people is apparently lying about what happened, then, of course, the other person has to provide as much detail as possible because that's how we establish their credibility. In real life, that's how we decide whether we believe someone's story, right, the details. So yeah. um, I, I think the critics are sort of misguided on this front. I think the prosecutors really had no choice after Todd Blanche denied uh, that this encounter happening and it happened in his opening statement. So, Charles, give us mm. your sense of what's going to happen today. More important groundwork, maybe not bold-faced names, though Madeleine Westhouse certainly is a, is a key figure in, in Trump's West Wing, and how prosecutors will use them to set up what in many ways will be the main event, which is Cohen on Monday. Jonathan, everything since we've heard from David Pecker has been about dots. And Michael Cohen is going to be the person who is used to connect the dots by the prosecution. Each and every witness that the prosecution has called has given you a piece, a framework, if you will, to fill in what David Pecker began when he took the stand first as their witness. And every piece of information that each person has offered is painting a larger picture. The one thing that the prosecution has not done yet successfully is actually tie Donald Trump into everything that has happened. It's happened more and more and more. But Michael Cohen is the linchpin. He is the witness that is going to provide the information that actually connects the dots and puts Donald Trump at the center of this case. And I think that's why it's going to take so long, because they're going to take each of the accounts that the witnesses gave, and they're going to get corroborating testimony from Michael Cohen to actually tie Donald Trump in, which is what they have to do to get a conviction.
I wanted to know, <clears throat> Charles, you know, sometimes from the outside, we're not in, the, in that courtroom, things it can get a little complicated. Yes. And then we had, you know, the Stormy Daniels testimony that could be seen as a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's quite salacious. Um, I, I'm wondering if, if you think that, as an attorney, that the jury may see it that way, or if what they are seeing is kind of a straight through line. How, how tightly, um, how tight is this story that the prosecution is, is weaving? I think that the mm. jury is absolutely not seeing this as a straight line right now. And I think that it's the job of the prosecution upon summation to make it as clear and straightforward as possible. But when I say that they're not seeing as a straight line, please understand that's by design from the defense in many mm -hmm. respects. Part of how, why it's gotten so salacious is because the defense in this case does not have strong facts and they know that. And because they don't have strong facts to work with, the alternative strategy is We'll just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. If we can confuse this jury, then perhaps we get one juror who says, I don't really right. know if this makes sense to me, and I don't know if I want to buy it, and so I'm not going to convict. So there is an attempt to confuse it, the jury. Without, without question. Think. Okay. Yes. Yeah. In our final 60 seconds in the show, let's go back live to the courthouse. Vaughn, what are we expecting today? We expect uh, several more witnesses to come forward. These are the folks that could potentially also be those, you know, when we're talking about the record keeping and the chain of custody of the checks, individuals that could help round out the needed testimony for the prosecution. Again, it all comes down to Michael Cohen here next week as being the one, the linchpin that brings it all together here. But this was, you know, for having the Stormy Daniels testimony ahead of somebody like Madeleine Westerhout, who was inside of the White House, you have two very different characters. One who said that she affirmed that, yes, in fact, she hates Donald Trump. And another here inside of this courthouse right now who is saying that she has respect for Donald Trump and even went on to write a book affirming that respect and that appreciation for Donald Trump. So what this jury is seeing uh, in terms mm. of witnesses brought by the prosecution is a full scope of not just, you know, the, uh, individuals that hate Donald Trump, but also those that work so closely with him, including the likes of Jeffrey McConaughey and Rona Graff, who worked for him 35 years respectively. Yeah.